Hey everybody, Alex from SeemsGoodMagic.com here, and we are doing another Hour of Devastation Amonkhet Intermediate Swiss Draft League. Pride Sovereign's rare. I think we're just going to slam dunk this dude. Very, very strong card. Every other turn, get two 1-1 one, one lifelink cats that make them bigger. Very good. It's also a struggle to survive in here, which I guess since it's a removal spell that's premium and is monocolor, Maybe you could make an argument for, but no, this rare is too good. This is an amazing, game-changing card. Unfortunately, every time I play it, it immediately dies. Understandably, right? So, I think a, a actually a problem with this format is removal is so good and varied and everywhere that it's tough to rely on bombs to win your game unless they're like off the until you're in like top deck mode. But yeah, there's so much good removal. I didn't even look at the rest of the pack, but I can't imagine there was something better than Pride Sovereign there. So maybe we went Hope Tinder here. Stays on color with our first pick, but it also allows us to uh, ramp, which is nice. And it's a bear. It's a bear that ramps. I didn't give this card enough credit. Granted, you have to exert it to ramp with it, but otherwise there's Harrier Naga, which is a 3-mana 3-3, which is good. But I still think the ramp might... I'm going to give a slight edge to Hope Tinder here. There is a Torment of Venom, which is a very good card, but, I mean, if I want to play this rare, I am going to have to actively find a way to get some white. Like, I don't have to play green-white. We can find a way to splash. I have to play green, but I could splash for the white. I guess you don't have to play green either. You could splash for the top end and then maybe be main white, but... I'll probably just take the ramp card here. Two puncturing blows too. Jeez. Good removal. So I'm taking a ramp bear over removal that's on color with my first pick. Well, now we just slam this ambuscade and never look back. So there's also a sharpshooter in here. I love the scrapper. No good white card. Well, no, that's not true. Angel of the God Pharaoh actually seems like a perfectly legitimate white card. Cycles early or top deck into a win con. I like it. I like cards like this. There's actually a lot of cards like this uh, in all the colors. Just slightly inefficient fatties that have cycling two on them. We'll take this uh, ambuscade though and never look back. So now we have a camel. We have a gift of strength. Four red cards. Three of which, well, all four are playable. Uh, unquenchable Thirst, which is good. I like the Camel. Camel's going to be good with Ambuscade, but we are going to have to pick up some Deserts in order to make that work. Not Deserts. Deserts. Uh, Scrapper kills people pretty effectively, but do I take it here because I think it's... You know, a lot of people like to say, oh man, the signals were there, man. It was so open. You don't really have a ton of information until you're into, like, pick six, seven, eight, or so. Until you see what's wheeling. I wouldn't jump on the, oh my god, red was so open. How did you not know that on pick four? Well, yes, there's four red cards here, but we don't know what the rest of the pack was. For now, I'm going to take the camel because it gets the lifelink. It's worse than scrapper, but stays with the pride sovereign plan without having to go to two color. Or uh, three color, rather. So there's sharpshooter. Oasis, Avon is obviously sick with Pride Sovereign too. Uh, it really is. That is some really good synergy. Exert, untap, exert. Just get four dudes. Ugh, God, that is nasty. I kind of want to take this Stalwart, though. I may just take the Avon over the Stalwart because of how good the synergy is with Sovereign. It's also good with the Hope Tinder. You can ramp. It's going to be good with exert in general. Um... But Stalwart is just a real good beater. Real efficient beater. I think we're going to go for the exert synergy with our Sovereign. Hoping to not regret that pick. All right, Ambuscade number two. What a gift. Oh my gosh, there's Farm to Market and Sandblast in here too? Maybe Farm to... Well, is Farm to Market better than Ambuscade? I actually don't know. Maybe. Yeah, it probably is, now that I think about it. Kill anything that's attacking or blocking, or kill some things if you have a creature. Yeah, I guess farm to market's better. Jeez, everything good in that pack. Nasty. 
All right, beneath the sands, but I think we're taking the desert here because we have a camel. And camels love to reside in deserts, so we're going to take it. There's a pyramid. Could take the Naga, more of a desert plan. Getting a little three-drop heavy already. Could take the Sunset Pyramid. Um, are we going to be more of a mid-range deck? I don't know yet. Too early to tell, I'm afraid. But that is a lot of three drops, admittedly. So Sunset Pyramid can give you some card advantage. Probably good with ramp, actually. Excess mana usage. This format is faster than it was at the beginning, I think. 4-2 Trample is good. We're going to go with the Pyramid over the Naga, I think, just because I'm already a little bit three drop heavy, as I mentioned. So we'll take another removal spell. I'll take the Sandblast over the Naga. I've been pretty impressed with Sandblast. I know some people have said it's not as good as I think it is, but I think it's pretty good. So Saving Grace is a little more versatile than Gift of Strength. Gift of Strength wins more games, probably. But Saving Grace is one of those cards that just sort of no one really ever predicts that it's happening. And then you can do some really nasty stuff with this. Do a bunch of solid blocks that are going to trade and then just slam a Saving Grace on one of your creatures. So everything but that creature probably survive and then you kill a bunch of things. I don't know. It's good. Disposal Mummy's unexciting. I guess we'll take the dagger. Can turn our little 1-1s one into 3-1 lifelinking afflict ones. Pretty good. Ooh, get the gift. What a gift. Taking the green card here. Passing the blue cards. And we're off with our green-white deck. Okay. So, so far the curve is good. And we have good removal. Sandblast, Farm to Market, Ambuscade. We've got the Pride Sovereign, which is good. So we're just prioritizing our cheap things. We have a Hope Tinder to ramp if we need, so we can even pick up some fatties. Preferably some fatties that cycle. I love the versatility. I love versatility. So we're going to need some more deserts as well. Good red cards in here. Jeez. Uh, Stalwart, probably just a solid first pick. Good for beatdown. We can absolutely beat down in this deck. This is certainly playable. I actually don't mind the Sentinel and Sharp Tutors are good. Nothing else we care about, but let's slam this Stalwart and just beat down. So now we have another Desert, but we're I guess Cory Beetle is good with the Deserts. Remember, it doesn't return it to your hand. That would be nasty because it would be some serious card advantage, but... 4-5 uh, Body is good. There's also the Hippo, which is good. Naga, which is good. Vizier, which is good. Jeez. Vizier is good because we have... It's a little bit awkward with our Exert guys, honestly. Exert to ramp and then tap something. I mean, it works, but it works with Pride Sovereign, too. I guess we. it also is good with the Dauntless Haven. Hmm. To be honest, I'm kind of tempted to just take the Desert, because I guess we... Do we only have Camel Desert Synergy right now? I guess then maybe it's... We take a better card like Vizier. Probably the Vizier if we're planning on beating down. Every time we exert these these guys are weird exert creatures to synergize with Vizier. Typically you want the exact uh, the attack exerters, because then you're getting more damage in, but it still sort of works. I'll probably just take Vizier here. I mean I know this card is good. Just get by blockers is pretty nasty. Alright. Ketra's last mercy. I don't really need the life gain. Probably just looking at another Sandblast. Like I said, I like Sandblast. I just like it. I don't know what to tell you. We are a little bit creature light, though, aren't we? Hmm. It's easier to get creatures than removal, typically. But it also can be difficult to get premium creatures. But Sandblast has been good for me. It's. I don't think it's screwed up all that often for me. Sandwall and Naga would both be fine, too. But I think I'd rather just kill things. Just annihilate things for 5 damage. All right, Camel number two, a Naga, uh, Avon, uh, Angel. All of these are fine. I probably still opt for Camel over Naga because it's still early enough to find some deserts. You want like three deserts to reliably get your synergy, but having Dagger and Ambuscade kind of give me more incentive to want Lifelink, I think. Over an extra toughness, although an extra toughness is good. Or there's just Avon, which also gains life and is a 5-drop flyer, which isn't bad, actually. But let's keep this curve low. You know how I feel about low-curve decks. I love them. Another Desert. Thankfully, we're not even... Well, I'm giving up a Frilled Sandwalla for it, but I'll accept that. I'm going to take the second Desert here. Now that we actually have some Desert cards, a couple at least, I want those Deserts. I want them. 
All right, lethal sting in here, which is good. We're going to take a third camel. We're kind of three-drop dot deck right now, but we do have some two-drops too, so I'm feeling a little bit better about it. Another dagger. Otherwise, I mean, there's nothing else. All right. It's a lot of daggers. Sandblast again. Are we going to take the mummy paramount? I mean, this is a little bit awkward that I have as many sandblasts as I do, but what can I say? I like it. All right, we're taking the Steadfast Sentinel now over the Dutiful Servants. So, three drop heavy, but our three drops are good. Three sandblasts in a farm to market with all of these lifelinkers. No cat synergies, but we still have another pack to figure that out. Dagger of the Worthy on the camel, too, is pretty cool. And a Sidewinder now I get to get, I, I mean, I guess so. That's a lot of three drops. So we're probably going to play one colorless desert out of the third pack. We'll have to prioritize that relatively highly just because now we have four actual desert synergy cards. And just three drops for days. So I guess we're, we're going to have to start prioritizing our two drops a little bit higher here. But that's okay. You know what's nice? If we do end up playing the two daggers, you can play cards like... You can play cards like uh, Naga Vitalist and not feel bad about playing a ramp creature in a low curve deck if you've got, you know, stuff to just slam on it and be like, okay, now you're a 3 2 afflict 1 creature. Which is perfectly legitimate body. Good to attack with. And it still can double as like getting your 3 drops out there a little quicker. I'll take the Frilt Sandwalla here. Naga. Well, I, you know, I was just thinking I needed another three drop, so perfect. Well, white cards going late's a good sign. We don't need either of these. And actually, I guess Faithful doesn't even really work in our deck, so we'll take the Dutiful Servants. Taking the Foil Land. All right, so pack three, like I said, we want we really want one more desert. We're not going to be able to reliably get our uh, desert duders online without it. So Irrigated Farmlands is good because it's an on-color land that we can cycle. But Top Crop Elite is very strong. There's Crop Mate, which can bring back some things. And Sandworm, which is a big fat fatty. Probably just take the Elite. This card is fantastic. Loved it. Always loved this card. Still holding out hope to get that desert. Yeah, Takrop Elite is fantastic. It's a real real game changer. Imagine it with Dauntless Haven, too. It's just nasty. Uh, Bantu. Can I splash you, Bantu? Do I want to splash you? I mean, I can. I'm not going to. I think we just take the Bitter Blade Warrior and start dumping some of our three drops. I'm still... I'm, I'm going to set the... Uh, actually, I probably set the Sentinel on the side. We can. I don't. I'd, I'd probably rather pay one less because we're looking pretty beat down. I think the pyramid's going to go too, actually, for the same reason, because we are just beat down. So if we're beat down, let's take the bitter blade warrior over the hooded brawler, just because we need more two drops, obviously. Taking it over Bantu, we're not going to splash. Cultivator's unexciting, so is another three drop. Yeah, I guess we got to take this champ. It's good with. Yeah, it's good with our deck. It's good with our stalwart. It's good with our tender. Our, our sovereign, yeah. We're taking the champion. Good with our vizier. Yeah, it's nasty in our deck, actually. So we're taking it. Not going to hope to wheel it. Gust Walker is a gift. There's a start to finish, but now I think we start cutting. If I don't get the desert, I'm going to be really unexcited about our three drops. So we'll, we'll figure that out as it comes. But for now, not really feeling our camels as much. Three mana, three two is less exciting without a desert. So I think here I just prioritize this desert pretty highly. I would like the shed weakness too, actually, but I want this third desert. Not because I need a two two, although a two two with a double dagger is not bad either, but because we really need the third desert to reliably make our naga and camels good. And we're not like a super color intensive deck at all, as a matter of fact, so cradle seems perfectly acceptable. Honed Kopesh, or a Spearmaster. I mean, Spearmaster is nasty most of the time, but we already have Double Dagger. Kopesh is probably better than Dagger, just because it's more efficient. So maybe I just want to do an upgrade. If I took the Spearmaster, would I play it over something? 
it's probably better than Naga in our deck. I don't actually know if that's true, but... I guess I like Exert more in our deck because of the Champion, because of the Vizier, because of the Dauntless Haven. Yeah, that's a strong argument. Harder to block. But you have to Exert. I think we'll still take it. We're going to upgrade our Naga. Not gonna, not gonna, not gonna work here anymore. Mighty Leap. Maybe better than Gift of Strength. One less power and toughness, but you can go over top. I mean, regardless, we're taking it. We don't need anything else here. Honed Kopesh. Manglehorn, maybe a sideboard card. Not enough zombies to make that work. Crop Mate can bring back. Warrior, Gustwalker, Hope Tinder, Stalwart. Jeez. That's pretty good. Unwavering Initiate's good too, but we'll take the crop mate. Probably playing this over a camel, honestly. Uh, don't need any of these. Don't have enough zombies for this. Well, we're not going to play those who serve. Sure, we'll just take this. Sandworm if I wanted. Jeru's Resolve if I wanted. Works well with Exert. I don't think we... This is not a Sandworm or a Cultivator deck, so I guess we'll take Resolve for Sideboard. It prevents all damage, so it is good against burn spells. Can even stop a puncturing blow for one, or a puncturing blow? Is that what it is? Now I can't remember the stupid name. I guess we'll take a cartouche, whatever. Those who serve. Our deck looks good. I like the way our deck looks. We're probably going to end up cutting one camel to fit in this uh, crop mate. Thresher lizard, geez. Um... And we got the three deserts that I wanted, but we can afford to cut one of our camels and not be upset about it. Get rid of a three drop. Go for our more exert heavy uh, deck. We are an exert heavy deck. I could actually play the camel over the naga if I wanted, but I like the versatility of having a four power trampler instead of a lifelinker since we have three camels. I actually don't know which one's better. It might actually just be that the lifelink is better than a naga most of the time. I really don't know. Sometimes you just want Trample, too, especially with the dagger. But then you kind of want Lifelink with the dagger, too. Hmm. You know, I, my gut tells me that Lifelink is just going to be what I want most of the time over another power in Trample. I don't actually know if that's true, but that's how I'm playing it. So let's cut. Uh, so our choice to cut, because we have Gift of Strength, Mighty Leap, and Saving Grace. I think since we're beat down, we're going to cut the Saving Grace. I actually really like the card. Um, but I would rather have tricks or ways to fly over top. Um, our removal looks good. Three Sandblast Farm to Market, Ambuscade. We can kill things. Uh, and Mighty Leap and Gift of Strength. How did we still end up with 15 creatures and two daggers then? That's crazy. So our removal suite looks excellent. Let's group some stuff separate here. Curve looks good too. Like, we have a lot of three drops, I guess, but... I don't want to play 17 lands. Like, the way that I like to do it, if I feel like I'm too 3-drop heavy, a good way to do it is just move it so that your deck looks like this. And then it's like, could you still possibly play 16 lands if your curve looked like this? And I think the answer is yes. I could still definitely play 16 lands because we have plenty of 2 and 3-drops. So the only difference is I have a ton of 3-drops. So I still think we could easily play 16 lands here and certainly not feel bad about it. Um, yeah, all right. So, I mean, what what's my worst card if I wanted to, if I did, in fact, want to go down to or play 17 lands because I have two cycle lands and a cradle? Like, I maybe I can't. Actually, I'm feeling like I can play 17 lands because I've got a utility land and I have two cycle lands. So this way I'm just not worrying about missing land drops. We don't have any card advantage, but maybe I cut, like, one of the daggers. But then again, daggers are a good mana sink. So maybe I cut, like, a, a Gift of Strength. And the reason to cut the Gift of Strength would be Mighty Leap probably wins more games in conjunction with Dagger of the Worthy. It's like I'm equipped. I'm just going to go over top and deal a bunch of damage. And this way I can play 17 lands, still have three deserts, their utility lands. I don't have to worry about missing land drops. I still have plenty of removal. 
certainly enough creatures. I can pay for my mana sinks. All right, I've I've justified it to myself. We're going to cut the gift of strength. We're going to play 17 lands, three of which are utility, so that makes me feel better about it. All right, here's what we'll do, too. We can run the foil forest, and then that'll tell me uh, it would have been a gift of strength. So anytime we have this foil forest, imagine it as a gift of strength, and we'll see if it would have been better or worse as that. That's a good way. I like to do that, and it kind of... Well, it's a small sample size, so it shouldn't like dictate all your choices in the future. I still think I'm making the right choice here. No blue, please. Uh, do we want 10-7? We do have substantially more... I think we st we actually do 9-8, though. And actually, we cut two of these. I guess we do this. So we do 9 white. Here's what we have to do making this too confusing for you folks. Here we go. So, with the two deserts, we have should have nine white. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. With the foil force, we should have seven green. Three, four, five, six, seven green, and then the cradle. So three deserts, pretty good curve. 17 lands, three utility lands. Kill spells, the works, low curve, exerting for days. I like it. All right, here it is. Green-white beats. We'll play it like this. We'll see you round one.